Welcome back. Well, you may have seen a very important sign there, wet race. So the, uh, this race was scheduled to start an hour ago. The rains came down. There was part of a race run, 10 laps in track. Isn't it good to see Alberto Pooge back there? But, uh, Barry, it has been declared a wet race, and we believe 15 minutes to go before the restart. Well, exactly that, but it gets into a bit of a debacle now, because what happens is the, the ra they haven't had any practice in the rain, so therefore what they have to do now is give them 15 minutes practice in, in, the, uh, in the rain. But as you can see there, it's brilliant sunshine again. There was a race, it was started, it was stopped after 10 laps, and, um, you know, so... Luckily enough, it's a dry race now. You know, it's, they put up wet race. The reason they do that is because if it happens to rain again now, they're not going to stop the race. No. You so, know, you so can... for example, if you had wet tyres on now and it poured with rain after two laps, you'd be in the pound of seeds. Yeah. But it's, um, it's good. At least they've got, their all, they've got the regulations sorted out now. You remember Italian Grand Prix a few years ago when you spoke Mazzano, about Mazzano, I certainly do. <laughs> I remember vividly well. But you can see the storm clouds there in the background. There's a breeze blowing, which will uh, obviously dry the circuit out if it's damp in places. But uh, the sky looks pretty good. Well, it does look good. The, uh, the problem is with this place, when it does pour with rain, it really does pour with rain. But more especially, the circuit, the, the temperature of the circuit, you know, the ambient temperature is sort of 38, 40 degrees. And, of course, it rains hard, but it dries out really quick. Bad luck for Daryl Behe. Uh, the stop. So it's Luca Cadalora in front of Doohan from Alex Barros. Surprise, surprise, checker. So it's four Hondas on the, in the first four places. Uh, fifth place, Jean-Michel Bale on the Yamaha. Scott Russell on the Suzuki. Iso on a Honda. And Pooch on a Honda. So Hondas ain't doing too bad, are they? Doing very nicely indeed. And as I said, now, bad luck for Daryl Beattie because he'd uh, just had an enormous operation on his arm where they'd taken out a, a, a vein and an artery to rebuild with a muscle at the end of his foot because he was having trouble with that healing up. So he finally got it right. The doctors did a terrific job. He was as happy as Larry and then fell off in practice. Well, he fell off in practice, but it wasn't Daryl's fault. You know, um, something went wrong with the engine. The engine seized or a piston broke up and it just pitched him up the road. And... Uh, you know, it's no fault of Beatties, it's something that happens and uh, hopefully they've got over it. They drafted a new guy in, um, a guy called Fujiwara, a Japanese test rider for Suzuki's, and he promptly parked the thing in the bushes and he's not riding. So um, the only um, Suzuki guy is Scott Russell, but Scott Russell did go very quick in the warm-up. He was slow in practice, but he was six fastest in the warm-up. Looking down on the grid, I remember you got quite excited about this new Honda. Uh, the two-cylinder bike, and I know that you got very excited about Okada with the fact that he was going to ride it. Now, it's obviously gone very well here because it suits him. Mick's just explained that. There will be some circuits that will struggle on, but, gee, it's put some interest in it. Oh, it sure has. In actual fact, I can't remember where Okada finished in those first eight places. Can you? <laughs> anyway, so if, if he didn't finish, obviously, uh, in the rain, he must have parked it in the bushes, but it is obviously a very, very competitive bike, and uh, it's just a pity, you know, that we had the rain because it would have been interesting to see, um, it would have been, if Okada had have got off the grid, he's a very, very quick rider, as you remember, on a 250, and I think um, everybody would have had their work cut out if he'd have got a good start. Knowing what you know, having talked to a lot of the people, there's the layout of the circuit, um, as a quick preview to the, to the year, I mean, uh, the Honda's obviously going to be strong. Are the Yamahas any better? Well, the Yamahas are a lot better than they were last year, but the interesting thing is, is a uh, typical Yamaha factory. Um, Wayne Rainey's running the 500 team this year, and he's riding, Cap Rossi's riding for him. And um, it was interesting that at the first test, um, the only guy that had the new bike was uh, Loris Cap Rossi. So, um, John michel Bale, he's riding for Roberts. Um, Roberts' his son's riding for him, but unfortunately he's got a broken leg. But it could be a good year. The thing that really does surprise me, Daz, is the fact that Abe is not shown good in testing, in uh, the qualifying or anything. Um, and I don't know why, because if you remember here last year or whatever it was, uh, Abe was right up the front. Yeah, I, I've got to say this, you know, when he had that really big tumble at uh, Suzuka, I'm not quite sure he really ever got over that. That was a pretty big shunt, and I mean, he really hasn't been that spectacular since. Maybe well, once or twice. Well, he has been spectacular. You see, did six at the front there. That is um, Okada, so he is in the race, and uh, I can't remember, where, as I say, where he finished in the... Uh, in the first one. Yeah, Abby sort of did start to really get it all together. He didn't crash a lot last year until towards, until towards the end of the year. And as you know, you know, that kind of puts you off, you know, upsets your sort of confidence in that. But um, he's just not doing the, doing the business at the moment. 
Caparossi, you've got to hand it to him. He stepped off, uh, stepped off the Honda and got on the Yamaha that's supposedly a right old dog. And um, he's going very well. Now, this is a track that I know that you've got some affection for, but I mean, there's a lot of things coming to play here. I mean, the weather obviously is uh, unpredictable. There's a tremendous amount of humidity. Oh, it is. It's horrific. You know, if uh, Robin Williams could give the weather forecast, he'd say it's hot, damn hot. It's mm -hmm. terrible. I mean, it's purgatory. I spoke to Mick yesterday and he said, it's just so hot and sweaty that um, you do 30 laps around this place, you don't need Jenny Craig, I tell you. I was interested when I was talking to Mick uh, when we were talking about the, actually the, the, the new Honda bike there and, and the chances that the young fellas they get 23 laps to race distance there, 81 kilometres. Um, and he, he was talking about his starts last year and he said, if there's one thing I've really got to get right is my starts. He said, I just gave so many people so much start each and every time. Well, he's right, you know, but I'd just as soon be sort of as good as he is in every other direction and um, take pot luck on the starts. Well, Luca Catalora there, bike number three closest to camera. Michael Doerner sitting there on the resplendent colour of the Honda there, wearing the number one, of course. Yeah, with uh, Catalora, he has to... He has to beat Mick, because he said Mick was on the best bike all the time. So uh, we're going to see, right, that's um, Checker. Looks like Checker up the inside there. Yeah, Carlos Checker. He's the guy. As you say, it's great to see Pooch back, but he's struggling still with a really bad leg. Is that, that's Mick he, in the lead now from Checker. Oh, and Catalora nipping up the inside, up the inside of Checker. Oh, Sahiro, look at that around the outside. Plenty of action as they go through the first couple of turns, but Mick Doohan said what he had to do. He had to improve his starts. He's certainly done that. Yeah, now, ooh, somebody came together with... Uh, looked like Caparossi came together with uh, some guy on a green bike. Just bearing in mind, this is the first time we've seen the bikes this year. So the guy there that's in the bout, just in front of the, the Yamaha, the back of that first pack, I'm just trying to suss out who it is. The thing with the uh, twin-cylinder 500... Uh, Honda. Oh, up the inside, Okada. There Good he goes. Move. Now, you see, with Okada, if he can get a bit of a break from Mick, you know, the, the bike is obviously perfectly suited to this circuit. Now, had Okada been right at the back of this lot, he'd have really struggled to get past. But he's done the right thing. And you see how much he's pulled out already. And don't forget, the bike is a lot lighter than... <laughs> Look at that. It's lot... a rocket ship yeah. around here, isn't it? No well, doubt it about is. that. You know, it's very light, Dazza. You know, and in conditions like this, um, the biggest question mark is, are the tyres because they use a different size tyres to the 500 and the 250. So the only guy that is using that tyre is Okada. So it's either going to be good or bad, and if it's bad, it'll be too late. Oh, dear. Yep, one down. It might be Okada. It's it is Okada. Okada. Yeah, he's dropped the bike. Well, oh, he shouldn't. He'd be, he'd be upset about that because, I mean, here's his first Grand Prix on a 500. He's gone past the world champ. He's leading the world champ and then throws it into the sand trap. Well, I've got to say, really, at the end of the day, you ask for everything you get or you get everything you ask for because he was going off like a rat up a drain pipe you don't pull out that much distance from doing no one does in two laps unless it's rainy three years ago with or four years ago with dunlop tires and he's silly you know that was a silly mistake because um if it had taken it nice and easy now the first three as you can see now is starting to build up a little bit of a buffer here and it's of course michael doing's in front luca catalora sitting in there as well and uh, Barros, Barros is making a good show there. He's there, Checker yep. is there. Yeah, that's Checker, and I'm just looking bit... Oh, Checker had a bit of a slide there. Looks like Caparossi behind there. We haven't had a good uh, Civic 65. Can't see it. So doing now, leading from Luca Catalora, and there's been a few things said, but again, he, uh, he thought that Alex Creville on, on the Honda was going to be the main danger outside Darrell Beattie. Well, I think he's right. You know, the um, Caparossi, the Caparossi Catalora really is out to make a name for himself because, as I said, he said that he said that Mick has won this thing a couple of times because the Honda was so good. So he really has to get out and uh, and do the business now because otherwise he's going to look pretty silly. Top six, Bale and Russell in on the end of uh, that group we've talked about. But they're starting to sort of break away just a little. It's not by much, but it's enough to start to build on. Doohan leading them a merry chase at the moment. I tell you what's interesting here, Daz. I don't know whether you can remember last year I was saying, oh, look at Doohan. He's keeping the bike up straight before he squirts it. 
And the reason, if you if you look at the corner onto the start and finish straight, that's where it's really easy to see. You'll see that, that Mick gets the bike up really straight before he gives it a handful. And the reason he's doing that is to conserve the tyres. Because he said, believe it or not, two laps. After two laps, the tyres are really feeling the... Uh, Filling the hard work. Luca Catalora then came right up behind you and had a good look, put a wheel on both sides of the bike, let him know he was exactly there and said, like, I'll have a little show here. So he's hanging on pretty well. And, and Barros is doing well too. Yeah, he is. Just, just have a look at this, if, if we get this good shot from the distance again. It's so old. Hey, look, you see how Dylan's keeping the bike up straight yeah, and he's obvious, sort of huh? leaning off the side of it. And uh, that's, a clear, that's a clever thing to do, you know, because whilst... It's probably quicker to drive it really while it's cranked over. You can destroy the tyres. So Catalora, meaning business now, sits in behind Doohan. In behind him is Barris, then it's Checker. Tell you what, old Barros is not going too bad, is he? Um, when you consider it, you know, let's see if he's uh, the same as he was last year in that he'd get up the front and he'd work his way steadily back through the field. So as Michael Doohan leads him around here at Char Alarm, we'll take a break, come back, stay with us, Australia, because the Aussie, he's in front. We take you back now to Char Alarm in Malaysia, and as you can see, there's a ding-dong battle going up in front, and the rest of the uh, group are starting to close the gap, so this race is far from over yet. Yeah, in actual fact, uh, that the first Yamaha is uh, Jean-Michel Bale, actually, and not Capra. So you see there's Bale just at the back of that bunch there. And he is... Uh... No, that that Chiron was wrong. That's not Bale. That's, that's uh, Abby that is behind um, Scott Russell. It's uh, he, So he must have heard what we said, Dazza, and wound up the wick. He's certainly having a go. Bike number nine is uh, Abe, and he really is storming along at the moment, trying to bridge the gap as he comes in. Scotty Russell doing a good job. Scotty Russell showed some consistency last year. Toward the end of the year, he was riding very well. Yeah, he did start to go good. At Donington, he was going very, very well, and then um, he got knocked off at the end of qualifying, and he, ne he never really shone after that. But you look at old Abe now. He's on I was going to say, if that was Jean-Michel Bale, I'll... I would be very, very surprised. <laughs> I can't understand where Caparossi is because, uh, as I say, he's been going really very, very quick in testing. And uh, as far as I can see back there, I can't see another red, uh, red Yamaha. So they're starting to close the gap up, but of course, tyres will come into play around about the oh, halfway mark. Exactly, hit the nail on the head. This, this place for tyres is a disaster. As I said, Mick said, after two laps, Normally, on a, on a tyre, you'll get at least seven or eight good laps in a race. You mix it up. After two laps, you can feel the thing deteriorating. Now, they're riding harder, this group here, because they're trying to get onto the, the top three. So, I mean, if anybody's hurting their tyres, it's those the three riders right there. Well, you look at the look at Russell there. As he pitched her into the corner, you can see the back end of the bike coming round a little bit. And, uh, you know, there's no doubt that um, Scott Russell will be out to get a good result because... Uh, as we were saying, you know, he didn't really shine last year. Daryl Beatty just out, um, blew him off everywhere, really. You see the back end of uh, Checker's bike there seems to be uh, bouncing around quite a lot. Those graphics, Barry, that we saw on the screen as we came back to the break, of course, they're made up of the results from the first race and, uh, and the current positions. So there's two parts of this race now. Oh, right, yeah, OK, I'm with you, I think. <laughs> well, it, it does get a bit confusing, but when, when a certain amount of laps have been run in the race, right. they've got to run no, as two can, separate uh, events. Exactly, they call it two races then. So uh, those results you saw are also hinged on those uh, ten laps that we, we did have prior to the rain tumbling down. So Russell now putting a lot of pressure on Checker, and right behind him is Abe, the very skillful Japanese, and isn't he a, a wild child? He's got the hair down to the shoulders, and he's uh, into some pretty wild rock and roll music, and he rides the same way. Exactly that. He rides a bike so totally different to everybody else that uh, to set his bike up must be a complete and utter nightmare. Standing after 17 laps, Russell Ito. Well, I don't understand that, because that is not Ito behind Russell. That is definitely Abbey. 
We'll sort it out at the end of the race, though. <laughs> but uh, information coming, it's a bit sketchy at the moment, I've got to tell you that. But Russell and Arbe are having a real ding-dong battle. Checker just gets about a bite length on. It means nothing, of course. They're trying to drag themselves up to this bunch in front. And Mick Dewan's still leading this race, but this is where the battle's on. And Russell doing everything he can at Checker. But Checker just keeping him there, holds his line, and Russell's got to find the way round. Arbe, of course, could be the big winner, because if they do have a desk, but he'll just dive up the inside. <laughs> you know, there's no doubt whatsoever about that. You know, he's, he's uh, certainly not short on the old uh, big brakes, as they say. Great to see the bikes back on the track, though. She was, you know, you miss them. Uh, you spend a season or two oh, with these Abby! things, and up the inside, gotcha. as we predicted, have a look. He'll just put it there. <laughs> Don't worry about that. He'll have a big go. Now, yep. Dewan's got some uh, pressure from Catalora. Yeah, he has, and as you say, it's nice to see him back again. But I'm really impressed with Barros so far. It's um, it's good to see him up there. He's riding for the team that Caparossi rode for last year. Brought an enormous sack of dosh from Brazil to get the ride, but it doesn't matter if he rides. Well, it uh, doesn't matter, does it? Amazing what a colour scheme does, doesn't it? How you, how you can look so yeah. differently, just totally different in different colours. Oh yeah, amazing what a sack of dosh does as well to get a ride. <laughs> amazing what a sack of dosh does anywhere. Anyway. Abby's definitely going to have checker. I'll get a load of this. Look on change of direction. Oh, back end. Oh, dear me, who's this? Could be. It's Eaton. been a fair accident, I'll tell you, because uh, he's hit the um, the airbags there and really knocked them about. But we'll, we I, may get a replay on that. I'm At the moment, though, Abe out in front of this group now. So he's worked his uh, way past their bike 41. That's Ito. I thought it was Ito, but then you don't like to say it's someone if you're not sure. So really on the charge now is bike number nine, Abe. And Russell is... Uh, looking like he wants to get back past Checker. Look at the dif difference now that since Arve got past, I mean, that's the group in front of him there. He is closing the gap at a rapid rate. Exactly that. You see, and Arve this year is running on um, running on Michelin tyres. Um, he was very, very used to the Dunlops. And uh, it is quite a different tyre. You know, I think it's probably the Dunlop is a more forgiving tyre in that it slides around a lot, whereas the Michelin grips like hell, and then when it lets go, it really does let you know that it's gone. Well, he's opened up a fair gap on these two now since he got past it. They were obviously holding him up. It looked, I'm not sure, it looked as if um, Barros had got past Catalora. You from our base bike. Have a listen. Now, that, now you, oh, you hear the thing spinning a bit then. Pretty demanding place, this, isn't it? Oh, it is. Blooming hard work, I tell you. See, Barros has got him. So Barros up a spot. He's gone past uh, Catalora. Well, that's good, you know, because uh, it was a bit ironic that he really showed form. He led a couple of Grand Prix on the Suzuki and then... Uh, Quite frankly, last year was a waste of space, really. You know, he, he didn't deserve, or didn't look like he deserved the ride that he had. But if he rides like this this year, then um, he uh, deserves everything that he gets. So even though Mick's in front, he's still working pretty hard. These two are charging behind. They don't know about Arbe. I mean, of course, the pit signs would be saying he's on the charge. But, well, all Mick can do is control the race from the front. I think the good thing is with, with doing now, he's so together that he goes out in uh, qualifying. You see him leaning off the bike and keeping the bike up. Right? He does a hell of a lot of laps in practice on the same tyre, you know, to see how it's going to go towards the end of the race. And uh, that's the only way to do it. You know, when, when the Grand Prix, when it's really close at the front, um, that is what wins your races, you know, really thinking about your racing and thinking, OK, how long's this tyre going to last, etc., etc., and should I go for the harder one just to be safer? And uh, that's where Duan is really ahead of the game. Well, I've got to say, I spent time with uh, both Beattie and Duan uh, when they were in, uh, at Eastern Creek tyre testing a little uh, earlier on, and I've got to say, I've never seen the pair of them so relaxed. Unbelievable. I mean, Daryl's got, got a fixed wing uh, pilot's licence now as well as his chopper licence. He said, I'm enjoying riding, I'm enjoying life, and I've never seen Mick so relaxed. Well, it's good, you know, because um, when you're relaxed, things come really easily. And uh, when you see how well Beattie was riding at the end of last year and also in the testing, he's been really quick. It's just an irony that the thing sort of dropped its lunch and threw him up the road. So 12 to go. 
and do it in total control at the moment. The only man that's uh, putting a little bit of pressure on the moment is Barros, and he's uh, also got Catalora right in behind him, but Mick seems to be dictating the pace as he wants at the moment. They get a little bit close, and he just inches away by a bike length or two. As Barry said, he's been really good with his tyres, sitting the bike up, not leading them over on the walls, not scrubbing them out. Very hard place on tyres, the humidity alone. It'll be interesting to see. I think, as it's there, you know, the one thing that would have put a smile on Mick's face is the fact that um, Barros is behind him now, not Catalora. And I think you'll find if either Barros or Catalora starts to really put pressure on Mick, then he'll turn the wick up. I, I personally think that Mick is going as quick as he needs to go at the moment. It looks that way, doesn't it? He looks so relaxed and, and, and uh, calm on the bike. He doesn't seem to be working over time at all. It all looks nice and tidy. Well, when you, when you get a circuit like this, it's really hard on tyres. The, the most sensible thing to do is to try and conserve the thing as much as you can. And, uh, you know, when you need tyres, the last sort of four or five laps of the race, if you really destroy them through the middle, then you uh, can end up regretting it. Well, Barros now comes right up behind him under brakes. Catalora moves up. You see the bike just step around a little bit and has that little uh, wobble that we see under brakes on these things. I mean... To ride one of these bikes to the limit, there are only a handful of people in the world at any given time can do it. Didn't like the way you saw Mick accelerating around that, around that right-hand kink there. I don't like the way the, the, the back Catalora. end... Yeah, Catalora's bike. The way the back end of Mick's bike is starting to wallow. It looks like the tyre's starting to spin quite a lot. If, you, if we get a good shot of it from the rear, I'll show you what I mean. Oh, Russell passed Abby again. So a couple of changes of position there. Catalora, you saw, go past Barros, and uh, Scott Russell has gone past Abe. So a few changes here as this race now well and truly over the halfway mark. So tyres now, if you've got a problem, you've got to live with it now to the end and do the best you can. Abe now chasing Russell. Good shots from his bike. Yeah, it's always a great shot on board. When, especially when you're following someone because it gives you a really good idea how good they are on the brakes and mid corner speed and that. You see right you see the onboard here, you see the back end of Russell's bike. He's just controlling it with the throttle, accelerating as hard as he can. Now watch if he does it on the right hander here. No, it's a bit too much of a slow corner, but it was a really good shot because you can see Russell just playing with it on the throttle, just giving it as much as he could. And uh... So Abe now right up the back of uh, Scotty Russell, as you saw there, closed right up onto the brakes. Got plenty of mumbo down the straight, that thing, because he really made some distance up as they came down that main straight over the start, finish line. Mike uh, McDoon still out in front. Just have a look. Oh, see, back here, I reckon Mick's in tyre troubles on the back. You see there, there was a bit of a jump. And if you have a look out of here, yeah, it's definitely uh, back tyres. All stage. right, so maybe Michael doing in some problems with tyres here. Laps are starting to run down. We'll take a break, come back, stay with us. Action happens here at Shah Alam. Catalora throwing a big challenge out to Michael Doohan. Barros had a, a big slide, lost some ground. In fact, Barry, look at the ground that cost him. Well, yeah, but uh, this is what I was saying earlier on. You know, Catalora has definitely upped the pace in a mammoth fashion. And um, Mick is just responding to that at the moment. You know, we won't know for another... Uh, another couple of sort of just to watch their back wheels because that will give you a good idea how hard they're trying. Just explaining that lineup of riders there again. This is a combination because of 10 laps of the race was held in under different conditions. They've restarted the race, so Catalora is still leading McDoohan because of the combined point score. It gets a bit confusing, but that's how it's running at the moment. Well, as it stands, Catalora stands to win it overall. What they've just decided to do is amalgamate the two races and as a one race result, which is a bit stupid in my opinion. They should give points for the first, half points for the first race and half points for the second race. Well, I saw Barros and he really has made up a lot of ground after that slide he had. He's, uh, he's got almost back in contact there. Uh, the laps are starting to run down, of course, but these two have had a great battle too, and that's Russell and Arbe, but they're still in now. now really to win this he's opened up a little bit of a gap traffic coming into play as you can well see there but look at the ground barris has made back up he wasn't even in sight there half a lap ago i think uh, as far as um 
winning it as far as Mick is concerned, uh, the most important thing uh, would be for Mick would be a moral victory over Catalora, you know, because uh, we we didn't get to see what happened in the first race. Um, and for sure, Mick needs... Uh, let's have a look at this back marker. Up the inside. Yeah. Oh, shut the door. Exactly what you don't want with laps of running. Exactly. Down. Oh, get. Look at Catalore. He's been the big winner there. Comes right up in the behind. Doing again. That rider took an eternity to get out of the way. Doing a be fuming over that. Well, exactly that. You see what happens. You're oh, you're the first one passed, and you're the one that rings the doorbell, and then everybody comes waltzing through after that. So Catalora now all over the back of doing. You see Mick Spike moving around then, Barry. Very obvious. Well, it looks like it, doesn't it? This is a place where Catalora, if he gets close enough, I wouldn't mind betting he'll have a little bit of a dive up the inside there. But uh, we'll have to have a look. Um, laps going down now. Where Catalora is quick and where um, doing is quick. So six laps to go, as you just saw the board there. But this is where all the action is at the moment. Doing has led Versi from... Uh, the start of this second race and Catalora's climbed all over him. Now he knows, he would know the point score system, so he probably knows that he is in the uh, in the box seat or the pound seat, Barry, as you would say at the moment, as far as winning this thing outright. But he'd like to beat Mick on the track and vice versa. Alongside, yes. Got plenty of power, this thing, hasn't it? Ah, uh, yes, I think so. Gotcha. And gets him. So Catalora now, first on the road and on the point score. Doing a fight back. Right in behind him now. So Catalora now not only leads on the point score, but leads on the road as well. It'll be interesting now to watch uh, to watch the back end of uh, Catalora's bike and just see see what sort of condition his tyre is in. They're obviously right. They're both. Oh, Mick dropped back quite a long way then. Mick seems to be taking a much wider line too now. I think no. I think something. I think something happened there. Where he's, he's either lost the front end a little bit or the rear end or whatever because he lost an awful lot of ground. Uh, there. The shot of him going See, past. Uh, yeah, look uh, at yeah, that. Rear Something's tire. happened. I wouldn't mind betting the lumps come out the rear tyre oh, because he's... Wow. He's had no luck. Because oh, yeah. um, when, when the tyres do get hot and uh, hot and bothered, if you like, they can tend to sling a big lump out of it. So doing now, struggling. And here's Barros. So that charging couple of laps that he's put in has brought him right up on the tail of Michael doing now. Well, you see, that the problem is, for Mick, if you remember at Hockenheim a few years back, he had a lump come out of a tyre. The frightening thing is that you don't know how big the lump is that's come out and if it's going to explode. Well, this is quite a scrap now. Catalora, there's the point score as they come up. Catalora, doing Barros, Checker. That's the positions they are. But now look Barros, at this. Barros, in front Barros of Mick has now. got Mick now. So Mick is back into third place. Gee whiz, he doesn't have any luck in the early part of the season, does he? Well, the point about it is that he'll be riding around with his heart in his mouth. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him come in, actually, because if you've got a lump out of a tyre, I've had one blow out at 280 or kilometres an hour, and it done half hurt, you know, and it's... Uh, if you've got a lump come out, you can feel it. It feels like the, tire, the wheel's out of balance, but you never know when it's going to let go completely. So Barris now, he's fired up. He uh, had that moment, cost him a lot of ground, fought back nicely. He's back into second place. There's Catalora, there's the gap. Back to Barris, and now look at this. They're starting to swamp Mick doing now. Well, can you believe it? Yeah, it looked like sort of seven or eight laps before. That's why I was saying have a look at the back of Mick's bike because it really did look like it was sort of squirrelling around quite a lot. Yeah, well, it was going everywhere, mm. wasn't it? So Barros now, I don't know if he can catch Catalora because he's really given it the business for a lap and a half to make the gap there. But now Russell's gone through, Arbe's gone through. There's Dewan now, so they're just driving past Mick Dewan now. Unbelievable situation here. He led from the start of this race. You saw it happen. Catalora slipped underneath and he's just struggled since that happened. I was just trying to have a good look at the rear end of the bike, see if, uh, see if you can see, but uh, if it is a lump out of it, oh, it's so horrible, so frightening, because you just don't know when the thing's going to let go, when and or if. Well, you can see now he's just trying to keep out of everybody's way. I mean, there's not much he can do. He obviously can't go any faster than what he's doing, and he just keeps looking and at the riders as they stream past him. This is Checker. He's certainly dropped back too. Checker was in that group with Scotty Russell, but he's 
He's dropped back a lot. Catalor now, he's in uh, the, the box seat. Yeah, well, that means he would have won uh, both the races, and uh, you don't get any better points than that, do you? You sure don't. So, Luca Catalora at the moment, but Barros hasn't given up either. I tell you, he's and made up a truckload of ground here. Nor Scotty Russell. Scott Russell looks like he's pulling uh, Barros back a little, but with three laps to go, you'd have to say that uh, you'd need a large imagination to uh, say that he could catch him. So Catalora now, he's uh, controlling this race. He can, he knows exactly where Barros is. He can just swap the pack, save everything, save the tyres, save. I mean, it's just a, a great comfort zone to be in, and Barros has got to do everything he can if he's going to have a go, and I doubt if he do it from there and with three laps to go. He'd have to see something dramatic happen up in front. Well, exactly that. Uh, you see, Catalora can, can afford now just to turn the wick down and play with Barros, really. Because um, what you do, you sort of wind them up a little bit, you know, shut it down a little bit. They catch you half a second, catch you a second, then they really th get excited about it. Then you just turn the wick up again and it completely demoralises them. So, Luca Catalora certainly struggled with the Yamaha. He was never quite happy there, but by geez, uh, showing some style here today. And, of course, taking first up points, that'll give him a confidence boost too. Yeah, well, it's... Um as I say, he's always said for the last two or three years that he wanted a Honda. And I must say, on uh, seeing most of his um, testing times and that, um, it looks like he was going to be eating his words, but they've obviously done a lot more testing and got it sorted to the way he likes it. So, um, but I still think, you know, you see Doohan on the right day, well, right day with a decent tyre and or whatever has happened, and uh, I think he'll still be OK. Well... It's, uh, of course, only the first round of the championship to go, and uh, you're, going to drop, you're going to drop rounds, but it's, it's not the ones you want to drop early on in the season, is well, it? Well, exactly that, you know, because it's just such a pain in the backside because, you know, you drop 25 or whatever it is points, and it's a long way. You know, you saw when uh, Mick fell off a couple of times last year and uh, Daryl Beatty had the lead of the championship. It took quite a long time to catch it up. Catalora now, the laps are winding down. The first round of the 500cc championship from Shah Alam in Malaysia. Daryl Beattie, of course, not riding today, crashed in practice. But uh, he'll be back. He was going very, very fast indeed. McDoohan had a moral victory here wrapped up. He was in front of Catalora. We suspect the tyres chunked. It'll be interesting to find out just what's happened. But Barry picked the bike, was moving it around maybe six or seven laps before that actually happened when Catalora went past him. So it certainly looked, and he did look down at the rear end of the bike, and they've all just streamed past him. He's kept it out there, and that's a pretty dicey situation if it is a chunking tyre. Well, it is. You know, if I'm wrong, Daryl, well, it won't be the first time. <laughs> I got the results of the 125. Perugini won it, Aoki was second, Ottle was third, Tokodomi was fourth, Al Samora was fifth and Rossi was sixth and Gary McCoy was in 12th place. Gary McCoy, the Australian 12th place in the 125s. Catalora now winding down on his last lap. Well, he'd be pretty pleased with this. He's wanted a Honda to ride first race of the championship and he comes up with a win. I mean, he's not there yet, but uh, he'd almost walk it over the line from there. I tell you, the other interesting thing, you see how nice and white that bike is. There's not that many sponsors' names on it and it doesn't half help if you win the first Grand Prix. Uh, to get some um, one of those sacks of dosh that I was talking about. You reckon there might be a few more names for the second round? Well, I would more or less lay money on it. It's good for him, though. You know, it's uh, first race of the year, first first race on that bike, and uh, it's a good sort of moral victory for him. Have a look at this scrap, though, back further. I mean, that's been on for uh, virtually two-thirds of the race, hasn't it? It will be really interesting to see Abby and uh, Russell in the last series of corners. You see them up the back there side by side. Yeah, we know he's going to win it. Let's have a look at the other lot. They've made up a fair bit of ground. I mean, obviously, he's he's back now, knowing that he's uh, he's going to win this race. But they haven't given up. I mean, they're having a ding-dong battle up there. So that's going to drag them up a little bit closer to Catalora as the corners wind down for now. The uh, very popular Italian is a lovely man, this guy. He uh, he's, he's, he's a good man to talk to. He loves the sport. Comes back onto the straight there now, Ooh. throws up the wheel, takes it. So Luca Catalora wins the first round of the 500cc championships, grabs oh. early points there, and look at that <laughs> dice over the line. Do you know who got it? I, I think it was Arbe, I think, but I mean, not because that's how they finished there, but I just got a flash of red. It was a bit late coming back to him. Barros there comes into second place. There's the handshake. Look at Catalora, he's pretty happy. Barros says, Thank you, I'll have, I'm happy with second too. Oh, Barros would be really pleased with second. You know, it's a good ride from him. So 
So Catalora, he's taken the first round of the championship. There he goes. He's pretty happy about that. Nice and relaxed. And that's the confidence booster you need. That's the way you like to start a season. New team, new bike, and new points. Points he hasn't seen for a while. Right, so let's go. have a look. Catalora, ba Barros, Checker, Russell, Doohan, Bale, Pouge, and Arbe. Arbe dropped a long way back, but they're... Uh, but that's the, that's the final <laughs> exactly. standing, so we still don't really know. But you see, Mick, um, fifth place, so at least he got some points. He didn't drop right out of it, and uh, that's good. Okay.